The world loves pork. It's our breakfast, our holiday meals, our on-the-go snacks, and our cultural pastime. In 2016, Americans consumed more pork than any other meat. And in North Carolina, there are more hogs than people. But there's one big problem. Pigs create a lot of waste. So much, in fact, that in 2007, hogs in Duplin County, North Carolina, produced more waste than the entire city of New York. Since people started using CAFOs, concentrated animal feeding operations, in the second half of the 20th century, issues of water contamination, noxious smells, sprayed fecal matter, and methane emissions, all attributed to hog farming, have come into the public eye. Hundreds of lawsuits have been filed, dozens of legislative regulations have been enacted, and thousands of people have come out to protest or support the hog industry. As a second year resident in North Carolina, I was new to this issue and wanted to understand more. So I went on a mission to find the truth. The real story of hog farming issues in North Carolina begins in 1995 when 25 million gallons of hog waste spilled into the river system, killing millions of fish, ruining countless ecosystems, and contaminating the water supply of all the residents downstream. In response, the Clean Water Responsibility Act was passed in 1997, which placed a moratorium on hog farms. This meant no farms could be constructed or expanded unless they met new strict regulations. In 1999, Hurricane Floyd hit, causing flooding that released thousands more gallons of hog waste into NC rivers. Over the course of the next decade, regulations continued to become intensified, and the moratorium was made permanent. Just last fall, when Hurricane Matthew hit, the new regulations were put to the test, and luckily, not one lagoon breached. Curious to see what was next for the hog industry, and what environmental issues were still of concern, I began reaching out to people to see what I could find. First, I met with Professor Charles Adair, and he taught me about anaerobic digesters and Duke's Carbon Offset Initiative. The way that the waste is handled is it all goes into a lagoon, which is essentially an open air pit. And you can imagine there's lots of odor issues with that. Um, you also have ammonia and other, uh, other potential runoff issues. Um, in addition to uh, something that caught our attention, which is the greenhouse gas emissions. And we thought, okay, can we reduce the greenhouse gas emissions and can we do that in a way that also might solve some of these other problems? We use an anaerobic digester and an aeration basin to first capture the gas, um, the methane, and we essentially clean that so that we can use it as natural gas um, and it generates renewable energy on, on site. And then we also process the waste a little bit after it goes through the digester. So um, we're removing excess nutrients, which makes it um, less potent in case of uh, spillovers, etc. Next, I met with researcher Jill Su to find out more about what progress is being made in this field. And he had a much more hopeful view of the situation. Although it was a very challenging task, we managed to collect a lot of useful data in both winter and summer conditions by creatively using the combination of different monitoring technologies. We're very excited about the results as it allows us to obtain generic information that go well beyond the specific application. Despite this progress, the systems used by Duke researchers are not affordable for most farmers, which means the only way to mitigate most issues right now is through policy. So, I went to the state capitol in Raleigh to talk with Representative Jimmy Dixon, a 70-year-old turkey and hog farmer and chair of North Carolina's Agriculture Committee. Representative Dixon told me things like, Now, are there an occasional bad actor? Yes. But the, the deal here, Ethan, is this. They need to appreciate that there are those of us who are willing to put up with the circumstances of production so that they can enjoy the benefits of consumption. There is hope, but we do not believe that these exaggerated stories of noxious, debilitating uh, odors or other effects are in actuality based on fact. Hmm. I'm, I'm available, I, you know, we have nothing to hide. We want people to know about the wonderful, magnificent industry that we have uh, developed over the last several 
decades. Even though Representative Dixon claimed that the odor was not bad and the industry was wonderful, I wasn't convinced. So he set me up to go see for myself. Driving out to eastern North Carolina, my friend Sean and I traveled along Highway 40 to Smithfield Foods offices in Duplin County. Smithfield is the largest producer of pork in the world. They sell their products to over 40 countries. I met with Don Butler, Director of Corporate Affairs, to see how the biggest player in pork was handling its environmental responsibilities. I must say that overall my impression of Smithfield was very positive. Don was hospitable, he showed us all the facilities, the various stages that pigs and their waste go through, and explained to us all the problems and benefits he's seen in the industry over nearly 30 years. The two biggest problems I saw were that the lagoon seemed well built and far away from rivers, but still not large enough to handle extreme storms, and the smell in the nearby spray field was tough to handle. Local farmer Ron, however, raved about how helpful Smithfield has been to him and his family, and claimed the facilities were completely safe. Ron lives in a quaint old home and raises over 5,000 hogs with his cousin. Finally, we went to a finishing operation next to the house of notorious critic Elsie Herring. Elsie has been fighting against Smithfield for years, complaining about the odor. Don thought the smell was not bad, so we went to check it out. I hate to say it, but the smell was horrible, and this was on a mild day with little wind. So I have to side with Elsie here. All in all, I learned that the swine industry is essential to the economy of North Carolina. But more technology needs to be developed to deal with the problems of contamination, odor, and methane emissions. For now, arguments over the issues and benefits of NC hogs are as messy as the animals themselves.